the legendary sword Graham was forced into the tree barn stoker by Odin, one of the most persistent and highly regarded gods in both Norse and Germanic mythology. Sigmund the Valsung pulled the sword from the tree and used it to defeat the dragon Fafnir. Though it broke in battle, after the sword was reforged, it was sharp enough to split an anvil cleanly in half. In Hindu mythology Wepom created by Varuna, the god of water and the ocean, the Varun Astra is a mythological weapon able to assume any shape. Made from water, the versatile weapon was said to instantly kill any inexperienced warrior who used it incorrectly. There are many deaths associated with the Ark. For example, only those with the correct breastplate and gown could approach it safely. From a modern perspective, the plate and gown might have been protective clothing from radiation. It is claimed in writings that such areas as the head, lungs, and genitals all had to be covered when approaching the Ark. Thor was renowned as the strongest, most warlike of the gods, hero of the Vikings. More than any other god, Thor was identified with thunder and lightning. His mighty hammer, returned to his hand each time he threw it. Thor's powerful weapon was said to be created by two dwarfs named Brock and Itiri, who made many magical objects for the gods. Before wielding his hammer, Thor was obliged to put on his iron gloves and a mysterious belt that would double his strength. According to Greek legends, Poseidon, who could cause storms and earthquakes, drown lands, shatter rocks, and finally bring back peacefulness, possessed a magical trident. His divine weapon that could shake the earth was created by the Cyclops, the giants skillful in metallurgy. The same trident, Trishula Sanskrit for triple spear, was also the weapon of Shiva, the destroyer, the most powerful god of the Hindu pantheon and one of the godheads in the Hindu trinity. Zeus, the most powerful god of Olympian gods was the master of Thunderbolt. He possessed a formidable weapon in form of a handgun launching a death ray, which he received from the masters of lightning, the Cyclops. King Arthur's Excalibur is probably the most legendary sword ever. It has certain magical attributes and an unbelievable legend is related to it. Legend says that there was once a sword that someone stuck into a rock claiming that only the true king of Britain would be able to remove the sword from the rock. Many strong men tried in vain to remove the sword but failed, until one day Arthur came and raised the sword and therefore obtained the throne. When King Arthur raised Excalibur, the legend says it was so bright that the enemies of the king were simply blinded. The sword also has some powers of its own, the person who uses it cannot die due to a hemorrhage as a result of wounds received in battle. In Welsh, Excalibur is known as Cald Fulch. In Hindu history, is an irresistible and most destructive personal weapon of Shiva, Kali and Adi Parasakti discharged by the mind, the eyes, words, or about. Never to be used against lesser enemies or by lesser warriors, the Pashupadistra is capable of destroying creation and vanquishing all beings. Pashupadistra is the most destructive, powerful, irresistible weapon of all the weapons mentioned in the Hindu mythology. Persian legends tell us of the legendary sword Shamshuri Zamarad Negar, originally property of King Solomon. The sword was said to be guarded by Fuladziri, a witch and mother of a ferocious horned demon. She protected it so carefully because this legendary mythological weapon was the only thing capable of killing her son. If a person was wounded by Shamshuri Zamarad Negar, the wound could only be treated by a potion made from, among other things, Fuladziria's brain. Indian mythology is full of wars between gods and demons and thus has many weapons. My vote would go to a weapon named as Baitram Ashura. It is the deadliest weapon, and its power can be estimated by the fact that even in a mythology that prides itself with wars of Mahabharata and Ramayana, it is never used. The only mention comes in Mahabharata, where Arjuna had fired it, 
but Lord Krishna tells him to call it back because it could have destroyed the entire universe.